So uh, you don't have to necessarily specify that it's a Python code. The fact that it's a .py will automatically do it. Now, you see that uh, the what you guys call the hashtag, but it's actually the pound sign. You'll find out that the pound sign is uh, is a what's called a, a comment. Okay, it's not required. If I took it out, the code would just run just as fine. The point of the comment, for example, and is you can for, you know put it in here and say comment, and it turns red. So it's, I am glad this code ran. Okay, you can put it here, um, or you can put it at the end of a line, and you can say, uh, this is, is a good code, for example, right? And the point is, you can put as many comments as you want, you can put pages and pages of comment, and people typically put comments in there. Uh, it's not going to get processed. Uh, the, the processing part of Python is going to ignore is going to ignore the code, but what it's going to do is, so why do you need comments? So that you know what's going on, right? So let's say, for example, you've got a bunch of variables that you're going to give values to, and six months from now, you're not going to recognize what those values are, so you say, you know what, let me, let me, uh, uh, I identify these values and in the comments you'll be you'll say oh, okay uh, you know uh, value uh, the the a variable a plus actually means something and b plus means something else okay so in any case um, we can the only code of significance is this so let's do this let's run this code and for running the code you can actually go to run um, you don't see it here you can go to run uh, and or uh, and run module or you can just hit f5 on your machine and of course you have to save before it runs. Now, you'll see the executable part of the code that uh, that you see here, and you see the executable part of the code, it ran and it actually said, hello world. Now let's go back to the code and see what potential issues uh, we, are likely to, we are likely to face. So, hello world, this is a good code, now we know something about the comments, let's think some, let's look at some of the notions of the, of the syntax. Now in this syntax you'll find that uh, uh, after, after Python 3 plus we actually found that, um, that uh, they made some changes. So every print command has to be enclosed in parentheses. Okay, and so for example, if you say, if I take the parentheses off because I forgot to add it, and of course you have to save it and run it, you'll find that it says missing parenthesis, and this is an error that you're going to find, okay? So you will say, okay, now let's let's close it. Something else you have to also recognize is that if you see this, if you open quotes somewhere, then you're going to have to close them. So for example, if we try closing the uh, and save, and again, it's saying it's not going to like it. So this little red bar that you see is uh, essentially an error. Okay, it's not going to it's not going to like it. So I'm going to close the quotes, and I've got parentheses. I run it again, and I, uh, you'll you'll see that the code actually ran. Let's look at the second code. And this is code number one underscore two. Okay, now here's some interesting things. Now let's say for example your code is saying uh, input some numbers or input a name. Okay, so recognize however that uh, anything that's enclosed in quotes is considered a string. Okay, and you can also put str but we'll, we'll, we'll look at some examples of that later. It's good and that's green in color, right? Uh, anything that's uh, purple has kind of an inbuilt command aspect to it. In, in sense, it, it does something, it executes something, and then of course there's the text. Anything that is uh, that is, is black on white, for example, is something that you assign, and you can change those assignations anytime. Okay, that the text is just something that you've assigned, and it doesn't really mean anything. Okay, so what does it say? This input command, if you type it in, it'll actually prompt you to say enter some text. Okay, and then whatever text you enter will be assigned as a value to this term, the text. And then it prints, and the, here you're just printing, this is what you entered, and on the next line, again, anything you entered as input here is assigned to this value, and then if you say you print the text, anything that you entered here will actually be, will actually be printed. Okay, so that's one way to look at it. So now let's, without any issues, let's just run it. I'm hitting F5, and you'll see that uh, it's actually saying enter some text. So in here, I'm going to enter this is some text. Now don't worry about the fact that the that is turned yellow because it's kind of recognizing some sort of a, 
uh, some, some sort of a command, but that's not going to, we don't, we don't have to worry about it. If you look at this code, you'll realize that, you know, that, that, that thing is, 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 is noted as a string. So you don't have to worry about that, the, the different color, right? Now, if I go back to my, if I go back to my code, I can just say, okay, this is what you enter. That's what it printed. This is some text. Now let's look back at the assignations. Okay, if you look at the assignations, you'll see that uh, that's a print. Uh, notice something that once again, just like we looked in the print, that there's uh, text is uh, when you open quotes, you've got to close it. And uh, if you parentheses, you've got to close parentheses, and any print command is associated with parentheses. Okay, if I took it off and I save it and I try to run it, it's not going to like it. Okay, so I'm, I have to make sure that I I covered uh, I I close the parenthesis. Now um, the text again. I told you that anything that's black on white is a number that you can you can give you can supply or 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 an attribute to a value for which you can supply. So let's say I call it apple. Okay, and let now let, let me run this code and you'll see what I mean. Okay, it's saying enter some text. Now if I say this is a good code, it's going to give you an error. Why the error? Simply because we we assigned this to a word apple, so we said whatever you input is going to be called apple, but then we forgot to add apple here, right? So if you add apple here, it says, okay, now whatever, and again, so apple has no meaning to Python. Anything in black and white, is an, any kind of assignation, there's no value. You can give it anything you want, any name you want, except remember that when you want to print it, you have to remember that name, right? So let's uh, let's run it. Okay, it says enter some text. This is good. Oops, doesn't matter. They don't worry about spellings once you've entered, and that's this is this is good code. Uh, add some text, and then you assigned it immediately to a value. But here, what you might want to say is that. Uh, enter some text, that's just a text, and then you say input. And so now question is, rather than have the input and the text directly attached to it, you say whatever is entered is going to be given to a, a variable, okay? And then, so rather than input that whole text like you did in the previous code, you just say enter, uh, input that stuff and already input, and then you run the code in the exact same way, and all the other stuff is the, uh, all the other stuff is enter some text, this, is good code and then it that's what it typed okay so what's the operative points that you need to understand here is that um, is that whatever you type can be assigned to something and then you actually assign that something rather than uh, than assign the entire text you know so for example if you have a longish text you don't want to mess that line, so you just assign it, uh, pre-assign it to a variable, and then you just read that entire variable as it. And you'll see that it doesn't change the code. This code looks exactly like the previous code. It's just a different way of doing it, okay? So let's go to code four, okay? Now, now we're look, going to look at some numbers. We're also going to look at something like uh, information, the type of values, okay, what type they can take. And now when I say type, uh, you know, the three different types, uh, when I say type, the three things that we look at, for example, and there's many more, but the obvious ones you say is that information you're providing it, is it a string? Okay, is it in quotes? Uh, is it a bunch of letters? Uh, now, if you put numbers in strings, it's not going to worry about the numerical notation of that number is just going to call it a it's just going to pretend it's a string it's going to think it's 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 a bunch of letters uh, something else that you can think of for example is integers mm -hmm. something else you can think of for example is real numbers with decimal uh, with with decimal with a decimal point and numbers after the decimal place those are called floating point numbers okay now you can actually convert from integer to floating point number and vice versa and some subsequent codes will actually tell you what that is okay the code reads i have a total Without going into much detail, I can just put a comment and I can say this code asks you to input three numbers and then it determines, let's call it calculates, value. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Again, since I've commented, it doesn't really matter. 
let's look at these. Uh, uh, so here's what happens is, remember when we talk about parentheses, you always solve a parenthesis from the inside out. So we looked at our input command. It says that enter a number. And then, so once you enter the number, the outside command, that is a float, is going to take whatever number you have and convert it into a floating point number. So, it's, so if you have if you enter 5, it's going to call it 5.0. And then that, uh, that value is going to be assigned to the first variable. And then you have a total of 0. So the total, which was 0, plus that number is the new total. Now remember something interesting about assignation is that if you assign a number and then reassign another number to it, you cannot go back to the original value. Okay, It just always perpetuates the new value that you provided for it. So that's a number, so the total gets a new value. Now, for example, if you wanted to put the total back to zero, you just have to re reassign total equals zero, and then it'll take a new number, okay? But it never goes, once it gets a new value, it never goes back, as I previously said, to the previous value, unless you reassign that value. This code asks you the floating point number, enter the first number, total, so the total takes total number one, and then it says, okay, now I put another number, and then it says, now the new total, which was this total, not that one, this total, it gets uh, that total plus the number you added is going to give you a new total, and then it does it again. And once you've done three totals, it's just going to give you an average. It's going to find a new total, which is a result here, divided by three, and it's going to say average. Now. What you've done here is you've taken the third uh, thing that we are talking about, this third type, and that is string. And string here is um, is just converts the average to string. So you might say, well, isn't the average going to be a number? Yes, it's going to be a number, but because you're going to write all of this in one line, and this is a string, in order to avoid any confusion, you just say, you know, I just convert it into a string. Uh, you understand that it's a number, but the computer doesn't, you know, you told the computer, don't worry about it because at the end of it, I just want the answer. And what does a plus sign mean? It's not doing any addition. It's just going to take three, two strings and concatenate them. It's going to put them one beside the other. And you can see there's a little space. There's a little space here, okay? So the plus is not going to add a space. It's just going to take this value and whatever average that's calculated as a string and is then going to include it. And we'll, we'll look at some potential errors here, okay? So for, the, for starters, I made some changes to the code, so let's run it. So let's add it, add the number. So I'm just going to say I'm going to add 500, okay? And then the second number, I'm going to add negative 10. There's no, or negative, let's go negative 10. And there's no real restrictions to any of this. And the third number is 39. And then it immediately gave me the average as some sort of a string. Let's go back to our code. And uh, let's go back to our code and say, um, let's make some changes. I'm not going to worry about this. Uh, the, you know, you already know about the quotes. But let's say I, I'm not going to, I, I take the string part out. I'm just going to say, just type the average. What do you think would happen, right? So now, okay, I'm going to run the code. And it says enter the first number. Okay, so so far it's fine. It's not not created any error. So we just to, for consistency, we'll use the same set of numbers, and the third number is thirty nine. And then it's not going to like it. Why does it like it? It says the average plus it it must be string, not float. Okay, why? Because you see, I took away the string part. So it's saying, are you trying to now make me take a string and attach it to a number? That's not uh, that's not doable, right? So we need to go back to we need to go back to string. Okay. Now I've added a little comment here which says, what other way could you do this? Okay. And there are obviously several. Whenever you write a program, there's always uh, several ways you can do this. But what I was alluding to when I asked this question, and we'll do that two quotes from now, is how do you redo this? Now, one thing you have to remember is the third flowchart that we did, the addition of five numbers. Uh, so think back a little bit to that flowchart. And you can go back and look at the PowerPoint, that, that part of the video if you want also. But we'll be doing exactly that two quotes from now. Now, the fifth code is doing the exact same thing. Uh, in the previous code, what we did was we said, okay, we have a total, you add a number, it gets added to the total. Then the next number gets added and the total gets increased and the total gets increased and you do the average. This is a simplistic way of doing it, right? We're doing the exact same thing, enter a number, convert it into a floating point number, give it an assignation of number one. 
then do another number, number two, number three. And then this is how you would do it in a typical mathematics setting, right? You would say number one, number two, number three, and you say total divided by three. Now, here the difference between the two codes is, and we'll, we'll go with the same answer, is the last time what you were trying to do is you were trying to concatenate a string with a plus sign to a to a to a, to the average, and you'll just write write the string version of it so we can write all of the answer in one line. And remember, the moment I took that string away, uh, it gave you an error. Okay. In this case, what you'll see is we are actually going to do the average. Um, uh, uh, we're going to keep the average as a floating point number because if all these numbers are floating point number, the answer is also going to be floating point number. It does not have to be. It does not have to be reassigned as a floating point number. But this time, what happens is because we are not trying to attach a string to a number, you're not going to get the error because we're just writing it on the next line. Okay. So once again, and I'm going to enter the first number. So we'll just stay with the same number because we kind of now remember the answers and it gives you the same value. Now, uh, the floating point number is given to you in, in what is called double precision, okay? Double precision. And double precision is, go is goes, gives you up to 16 digits. Now, there's ways in which you can format the print in the print command in such a way that you only get, uh, let's say you want the answer up to two or three decimal places, which an automatic, um, with automatic rounding off, okay? There's ways to do that, and two or three codes from now, we'll actually, we'll actually look at that. Okay, what else is there to remember in this code? Just pay attention to the, make sure the parentheses, make sure the quotes, etc., are closed. Uh, if you open one, then you want, to, you want to be able to close it. It's just a different way of doing this, this program. So now we are looking at code uh, or one, one underscore. So this brings us to uh, the part where we that was the third flow chart that you had that you looked at in the presentation okay we have remember there we had a sum view we kept it as zero and you have a count equals zero also okay so you said you have a counter and what the counter will do is it'll say every time you add a number it'll add to the count uh, then you add to the number it adds to the count and every time you had that decision that little the box like that which had a decision, and the decision was, is it greater than three, or is it greater than five in that flow chart? And if not, go back and ask for the next number. The moment it becomes uh, equal to equal to five, or less than or equal to five, or greater than five, then you say, okay, I got my five numbers, now let me jump out of that loop and go from there, okay? So that's basically what we are looking at. So again, the last two codes did the exact same thing, we'll use the exact same input, get the exact same numbers, and we'll just go from there, okay? So now, here you have a total, and you have a count. Now this is a new thing that you're going to learn, okay? Now let's just go through the through the logic of this process and then we'll worry about the syntax later. Whenever you have, again, remember I said anything in a string is green, anything that has an inbuilt Python command is purple. Uh, if you have a comment, it would be red. If you ever have anything associated with a loop where you have to have a recurring calculation or a kind of a recursive calculation, if you, if you will, it's going to be colored orange, okay? So what is it asking? So let's, let's read this like we were doing English. So while count, which means as long as a count is less than three, remember the point of this is adding three numbers and and determining, okay, calculating the average. And I've just saved it. And so what it says, as long as count is less than three, now um, it says add a number, you know, enter a number. And then because you've entered the first number, the count, which used to be zero, now goes to one because count plus one. And the total is whatever number you've added, okay, to the total. And the total was zero, so the first time you added, you get a new total. Remember what I said about ass about about assignations, right? Once you get a new value for it, you cannot go back, okay? And remember that, unless you have to reassign that value. Uh, this is what we see, and then it goes back, and then it then it says, is it less than three? Remember, it says less than three as long as it's less than three. If it's one, then the second time it's two, the third time it's three. Now, is it less than? three, yes, the moment it becomes it becomes equal to three, that is after the third number, then you say, okay, now the requirement for this condition, that while, as that means as long as, is over. Now we can jump out of that loop, okay? And that's basically what it does. We will, uh, we will let's recognize something. As long as you have something that loops over a particular calculation, that line will always end in a colon. Okay, that line where you're, where you're identifying the conditional will always end in a colon. What happens if I take that colon out? 
and assume you would and I have forgotten it all the time and I run the code uh, run the program oop it's not gonna like it okay because it's going to say something is not right here and so you say okay I'm gonna add the colon and then it'll be fine then what else um, what else new things that we have to worry about now you have a loop right it does something goes back does something goes back does something goes back the the if you did C programming or Perl programming uh, in Python, you realize that there is nothing which ends a line. When you know, when you finish your command, the line just ends. Uh, if you wanted to do this loop in C or Perl, you have to have curly brackets or braces, okay? And then you would say, and then you know exactly when you kind of have to go out of the loop. Because you have curly brackets, it doesn't matter how you type it, whether there's indentations, whether you move it, as long as the curly brackets are positioned correctly, the, the code doesn't, uh, you don't have to worry about the code. The problem arises with Python. Python is slightly different. So Python, again, doesn't have anything. You don't have to have a semicolon which ends the line. You don't even have to have braces. So the fact, that the, the reason, the way they deal with this notion of braces, the way they deal with this notion is by indenting. So anything that's within that particular is or is associated with that conditional has to be braced, uh, has to be, has to be indented uh, exactly one below the other you cannot have one guy kind of uh, you know out of thing it's not going to well it's kind of going to like it but it's not going to do it correctly okay so for for that for the, for the time let's just uh, not worry about it but what for example if I if I put this count one inside okay and I run it it's going to say unexpected indent and you can do this too so you can say okay go back what if I what if I took all these things and and then indent underneath this conditional and you'll see it's not going to like it because it says an un indented block okay and you can see this too and I accidentally took this out but that shouldn't really matter in the scheme of things now you don't have to have a tab it was indented with a tab all you even you can just have is one one space as long as whatever is indented uh, whatever is part of that conditional which follows from that conditional is is in uh, is is uh, is indented and one below the other so you can actually run this code and it's going to run without a problem so let's watch it run again same thing 500 negative 10 39 and we get we get the value what do you have to remember here that we have uh, uh, at the end of uh, anything associated with a conditional, you have to have a colon, and then anything that executes as a result of this loop or this conditional has to be indented correctly one below the other. Even whether you use a space or whether you use a tab, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the original actually had tabs, but they just have to be one below the other or else it's not going to work. Let's look at code one underscore seven. So in this code, you're going to learn something about types. In the previous uh, codes, I told you there are different types, string, for example, uh, integers, uh, floating point numbers, and there's probably a few more, but uh, you know, immediately relevant for what we're doing right now. Let's worry about the, the first three. Um, we saw how the average, you know, you just put a string in front of the, the an actual numerical value, and it just thought of it as a string, not of a number, which is which doesn't matter to you when you look at the answer. Okay, uh, you know that if you took that string part out and tried to attach a number to a string, it didn't like it. We know that you could input stuff as floating point numbers. Okay, and or you can take now you can go between integers and floating point numbers also. Okay, and it'll just take the integer part of it. Okay. So what this code does is it actually tells you, you know, it says, okay, here's a value. You're just going to give it a value and, uh, which is a string, and it says, uh, print it out, and it says, what is its type? Now, the type of that will tell you whether it's a string, whether it's an integer, whether it's a floating point number. And then you reassign the value of sum, and you call it 10, and you do the same thing, and you reassign, you know, call it 10 point over. Clearly, you expect this to be showing up as a string, this to be showing up as an integer, and this going to show up as a floating point number. That's what you expect. Notice something, how the print command has all the nested things, how you do the sum first, and then you identify its type. So we're always dealing with parentheses, uh, solving them from the inside out. So the, so let's run this code, see what happens. And it immediately said, it asked you to print and, 
Then it says, let's go to, but it says what type? It says it's a string, the AND with a string. And the 10, that class or the type it belonged to was an integer. And the 10.0 was a floating point number. Okay, so when you, you type in type, it actually will, uh, it will actually uh, tell you what type it belongs to. Um, and again, as I said, you can go from one to the other, and there will be examples uh, coming subsequent to this that will actually Let's look at code one underscore a. Now, you don't necessarily have to do the calculation, assign it to a value, and then get the answer, okay? Uh, it's not, that's not necessary. In this code, what you will see is that you are actually just printing out the answer, okay? You're also including a conditional. You're also including a conditionals. Conditionals can also be printed, and we'll see what that means. So what we are printing here is two, two plus four, uh, six minus four star is always multiplication uh, this is division the percentage sign is what is called modulus it actually says whether the what is the remainder it actually determines what the remainder is and you can guess a six divided it's almost like saying if you do six divided by three what's the remainder in this case you know that it's zero because because uh, three is a factor of six or six is a multiple of three and then this two double uh, forward slashes is what's called a flow division. We'll see what that is. And then it prints negative five, and then you know something raised to the power of, we don't have this thing, okay? The, uh, the, the hat or the, or the carrot. We actually have three star star two. That is going to be the exponential part of it. Now, uh, why is this being repeated? Well, it's being repeated because you, here everything is an integer, so you're likely going to get the answers in integers. This actually combines integers and real numbers uh, or floating point numbers. So whenever you combine integers and real uh, floating point numbers, your answers will be in floating point. Okay, and because the numbers are exactly the same, and this allows you to compare. So again, it will print the 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 the, the mathematical. Uh, notion, the answer to the mathematical notion without having to pre-say, oh, let's call sum equals 2 plus 4 print sum. You can actually print it directly. 2 plus 4 was 6, uh, 6 minus 4 is 2, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 2.0. Oh. Uh, obviously, the modulus is 0 because the remainder is 0. And then you see this, uh, that, that the two forward slashes, that's called the floor. It actually, uh, and that was a floor of 6 uh, floor division 3 it actually just gave you a value of 2 because that's the answer anyway. Uh, what you'll see, and 3 squared was 9, and what you also see, for example, if you combine an integer with a floating point number, your answers default to floating point. Code uh, 1 underscore 9 is actually a conditional. So you cannot just print, you know, okay, just print 2 plus 4, but you don't have to say 2 plus 4 equals uh, sum and then print sum. Okay, we already saw that. A conditional is uh, is where it actually says uh, print something. It's actually asking a question, uh, and and you'll get the answer. You'll, you'll get the answer in answers of true or false. Okay, and then and, and let's look at that work. So let's before running the code, let's do this. Uh, we'll learn a few more things also. So it says print seven greater than ten. Now because you're not adding quotes it's not recognizing it as a string. So when you say seven greater than 10, you know that's false, right? So it's almost like it's saying it's a decision. It says, it's like saying, is seven greater than 10? Print whatever the answer is, yes or no, or which, in which case this is true or false. Is four less than 16? So this would be false, this would be true. Is four equal to true? Now remember, in a conditional, the equal to sign is not the equal to sign like a single equal to sign because you want to not confuse it with an assignation. So for example, you will say, uh, you know, I'm just going to comment this, sum equals 4, okay? And that is where you're assigning a value of 4 to sum. But in this case, if you're going to ask a question, is 4 equal to 4, you don't just put 1 equal to sign because they don't want to confuse it with an assignation, so you call it uh, equal to 4. Now, less than or equal to 4, is 4 greater than or equal to 4? Yes, that, that part is going to come true because at least one of those is correct, right? Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And then when they say 4, when you see this uh, exclamation mark follow, followed by an equal to sign, you actually get 4 not equal to 4, and you know that's going to be false. So it's going to be false, true, 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 false. Now let's run this.
and as you can see false true 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 so again we, we can't just we don't just have to print the answers we can actually also print a condition whether something is true or false okay and so as we surmise uh, false and false and the rest of it is true so you're assigning a string and the fact that there's quotes will tell you there's a string and again uh, the reason why there's two different types of quotes here is because you don't really, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a single quote or a double quote. Don't mix and match, but if it's a single quote or a double quote, doesn't matter. It's still an assignation of something being a string. And then it says concatenate. This plus between two strings, we'll just add them together and you just print it. Okay, so let's look at the answer. For example, and here I tell you, remember how we saw in the previous, during the average, if you, if you take a string and you add a string to it, you can't just add a number to a string. If you add two strings together, it just concatenates them, adds them together. And then you have something called D, which is C plus a string 10. Okay, C plus string 10. That means it's a number, but C is a string, and you cannot concatenate a string with a, with a number, so you have to just make that 10 a string. Okay, and that's when you can put it together. So, all right, so let's run it. So you have... Hello out there, that was your A, where's the spam, that was your B, and hello out there, where's your spam, and then you put 10. And once again, we can take a look at this a little differently. Just uh, comment this out, and then uncomment this, and see whether it will work, right? And you know it's going to give you an error, right? It must be string, not an integer. So you cannot concatenate a string. Now, the other issue is, of course, um, you know, uh, if you look at the answers here, there's no space. The question is not going to create a space automatically. You have to build a space. Uh, for you, it might seem empty space, but it's actually a character. So when a program is reading space, it's also reading a character called empty space. Okay, so that's, that's valid. And now what happens is, uh, okay, you will see when I run this code, I, that, that additional space that I added now makes it looks a little nicer as opposed to, you know, as opposed to squished, which is what it looked like here. Let's look at the next code, one underscore 11. So here we have a, and I'm, it's a number, I granted it's a number, but it's a string. Uh, so it's, it's not being Python is not treating it as a number 10. Similarly, I've added a new string 10. And now when, for example, if I say print A plus B, it's just going to concatenate. It's going to call it 1099, and I'm going to print it. And then I'm going to say, what type is it? What type do you think it is? It's going to be a string. So now we are reassigning C as the integer of C. And you can actually do that, OK? So the integer of C. So whatever this was, 1099, and I'm going to print C, and we're going to print the type C and see what happens. And you Remember, when, when you did 10 and 99, it just concatenated it because the string, it just added it together. And then what happens is you said, what is its type? And the type was a string. And then you took the 1099 and you said, um, convert it into an integer. And now we know that it's converted into an integer because when we asked what type it is, it definitely says integer. Let's redo C and we can see, we can, we can convert from an integer to a floating point number, okay? So I'm just going to uh, just going to reassign C as a float float C, and let's run it again, and you'll see that you know now it, it added a dot zero for its floating point number, and it just called it a class of float. Let's go to code number one underscore twelve. Okay, so now now you're going to learn something about rounding rounding the numbers. As a thought experiment, we're going to go through this code and we're going to see, well, what's going to happen? Well, x is 1.6, and then you print x, and you say round it, so it's going to round up, right? And you know it's going to be 2. And then you say x is 1.6, that's a reassignation re of the number, and you call it an integer. The question now is, if you round, is going to go to two, but when you call it an integer, no matter what this number is after the decimal place, it's just going to ignore everything and just take the integer value of it, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be two because you're rounding, and again, round is a built-in command where you can round a number, and, and uh, 
integer is also a built-in command okay so let's run this and you'll see that in the first case you print 1.6 and you rounded it it's 2 but again when you do an integer do not expect it to say oh it's 1.6 I'm just going to round it okay so in this case the 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 uh, the definitions etc the commands have to be very very specific it's not going to understand it and that's one of the reasons why when you write a computer program you have to be really careful okay you have to be really careful it has to be a meticulous way of doing it and it is it's actually a great habit because it allows you to to kind of think logically to think in a in a stepwise the progression of your thought should be should be stepwise it should be logical it should follow from the previous step without any breaks now, as I as I mentioned in the in the introduction to this class, uh, while when we speak, we speak and we understand and we cognate in a contextual way. So the meaning is transferred, even if it was, you know, it was uh, spoken in a broken way. It was spoken in ungrammatical terms. Okay, a uh, computer programming does not allow you to do that. Okay, so there's a very fixed set of rules and you cannot really break the rules because there's no such thing as a contextual compilation. Let's go to code uh, one point underscore one three, and that's the last code. Uh, that's the last code in this uh, in this particular uh, for this particular lecture. So, what do we see here? We see um, we see a number, okay, one to three four dot five five six seven eight and now this is like all kinds of manipulations you can do with numbers okay so then you print the number it's going to print this now here's the thing about rounding right before it rounded it it just rounded it to the nearest after the nearest decimal places but if you put a round comma two it's going to round it up to the decimal places so you can see this is seven so it's going to call it five point five seven okay so now you can specify the kind of rounding and again, now you have a new value of the number, right? That Because that was a number which was a number, then this is a rounded number, but you're giving it a same value. If you don't want a reassignation, then give it another value, like number one, for example. Then you print the number again. And then you take that number, which is now 1.1234.57, and you divide by 1,000, and you're going to get 1.23457. And then you're going to convert it into an integer. The integer is going to be one, okay? Because again, no matter what is, no matter how big the number is after the decimal place, the numerical value of it, you're only going to get the integer value. Then you're going to get the integer value of that, which is going to be one, and you're going to print it. And then you're going to take this number. Remember now, because you wanted to store that assignation of that number, you just called thousands something different. So now that number, which is that number, divided by a thousand. But um, that's not a division, that's a modulus value. And remember, that only gives you the remainder. So it's going to give you 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. And then you can actually then rejoin the, you can just call it dollar, thousands, which is now 1, and then comma, and then you're going to get the remainder of the value. And then we'll see, it's called a pretty output because, again, and everything is in strings. And again, the plus sign doesn't do anything. It just concatenates it. And how we write numbers, you know, 1,000 is written as 1, comma, 0, 0, 0. So that's the answer you're going to get. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at how this code develops. So, for example, in the first case, we had number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We did that. Then we rounded it to two decimal places, so that became seven. Then you divided it by thousand. Now it's one, two, three, four, five, seven. Then you took the integer of that. That is one, irrespective of what's here. And then what you did was you took the modulus of uh, the modulus of the of the number. Okay, divided by thousand. And you got two, three, four point five six nine 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 four, and then you wrote it in a nice way. That is, you concatenated the dollar sign, you concatenated the one, you put a comma, and then you put the remainder. Okay, so this was the remainder of that uh, followed by that calculation. That's the modular sign. It gave you the remainder. Okay, and that's that's the that's the other way. That was the last uh, code for you know let's call it for week one uh, class. And then we will just uh, we will just go from there. Uh, so the next time we will actually do a series of codes, a lot more because there is a, the introductory lecture is is not going to be part of the second week. We're just going to basically just go through several codes, probably about thirty or so of them. Okay. And so anyway, uh, I wish you good luck. Uh, you know, welcome to the class once again, and um, and I hope you I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn something and something that you can use in your research or or your personal lives. Thank you.